Hello. Have you ever noticed how Yol Romero always has to turn his body when he turns to look at someone or something? As a result of his fusion, Dr. Hightower indicated that one of the things he has to get worked on is his neck's range of motion, especially the rotation of his neck, because it ends up getting very stiff. But because he's fused to the lower part, he's pretty tight on the top, like right there. Mm. So we can get better range of motion than that, especially in rotation. Now, consider this. How do you train your neck to prevent or minimize a concussion when struck? Definitely not like this here. You don't do that, ever. But this here, there's a reason why elite boxers or strikers are often found working out their necks. When you strengthen the neck muscles, you increase your neck's ability to resist against force, which minimizes rotation or whiplash when struck. But there's a catch. You still have to see the strike coming. If you don't see the strike coming that you aren't braced for it, you likely won't resist against the force the same way. Understanding this, you see Yoel Romero's advantage now every time he absorbs punishment. Of course, he's taking a massive risk every time he gets hit, and I'm sure his massive traps for sure play a role in his ability to absorb punishment, but even when he doesn't see the shot, unless he's tired, the force is transferred throughout his whole body. Why? Because his fused neck paired with his consistently tense neck muscles mitigate movement, especially rotation. We can get better range of motion than that. Especially in rotation. Even when he doesn't see the blow coming. I am certain that there are other risks because of this, and for sure, this would also reinforce what Yunus Amaliki highlighted in my previous video. If you think about it, in his career, he often just focuses on striking. You know, some would say he doesn't want to get tired, others would say his freestyling wrestling base does not emphasize riding a position the same way Habib Nurmagomedov would, but for sure, his neck injury is a valid argument as to why Yol Romero doesn't do a lot of wrestling, he doesn't want to get his neck caught. Of course he still does use it in his game here and there, but back to the point. Unless you generate enough force to injure his neck without him absorbing the force throughout his body, you'll basically be forced to stand and bang with an explosive, heavy-handed juggernaut or run away. Tim Kennedy got you all very tired before he did significant damage to you all. Even then, the bombs you all Romero had taken flush consecutively could have switched a lot of other men off. It's amazing, from being told he would never fight again, Recovering from eight months, four of which he could not even sleep in a bed, he had to sit. Yoel Romero literally turned a career-ending injury into what appears to be an advantage. This is perhaps why there's so much passion in his eyes when he says, anything is possible. It all makes sense now. Yoel Romero has seen the worst of the worst. Growing up in the worst part of communist Cuba with sewage and crime everywhere, then making it to this grand stage recovering from a career ending injury, there's no way the average man can handle and persevere through what Yoel Romero did. For him, all he did was believe consistently with sheer force of will, he overcame the impossible and made it his advantage. Him saying he'll fight until he's 50, you know, to a lot of people that sounds crazy, but at this point, I believe in him. I look forward to seeing how Yoel Romero's career will unfold from here. And thank you all for watching the video. If you like more from me, please subscribe and hit the notifications. Thank you if you did. It truly does mean a lot to me. Thank you. Smash like button if you enjoyed. It's good karma. And until next time, peace.